All right, welcome back. Now, mental disorders can be debilitating, especially when they emerge in adolescence. Identifying these problems and intervening early does help reduce their impact on the social, emotional, and academic functions of a teen. However, very few parents or teachers are qualified to assess mental health, and the substantial overlap between mental health problems and the usual teenage behavior makes an intervention even more complicated. Well, tonight I have a candid conversation with Zaria Gikonyo, who will share her experience with a mental disorder, as well as her father, Gikonyo Gitonga, who will share his perspective as a parent. Thank you both for joining me tonight. Um, Zaria, let me begin with you. Uh, just in terms of what you were dealing with uh, earlier on, you're not a teenager anymore, but just for yeah. the sake of our viewers who probably have teenagers in their households and are dealing with a mental disorder of some sort. Uh, what were you dealing with at that time? Uh, I think because at the time it was, I think it was around 2016. So there wasn't much uh, publicity or talk about mental uh, illness. So I was very scared to come out about it. And in my head, I was just thinking like, it doesn't make sense because my parents have provided everything for me. They've taken me to good schools. They've, you know, just given me everything I want. So why would I be depressed? And why would I, t what will I tell them that I'm depressed about? Uh, so that was a bit tough for me, but I also couldn't hide it because you could see a change in how I was. Uh, I wasn't the Zaria people knew. And I didn't like who I was becoming. I didn't like who I was at the time. So that was pretty challenging. And I just didn't know how to talk to, how to come out about it, what to say, what to do. But I was getting, I just, I just, all right, let me come to you, uh, Gikonyo, in terms of, did you notice anything uh, during that time? Uh, was there any behavior change that was a bit concerning in Zaria? Well, at, that, at the first time, um, I didn't know that what, what uh, Zaria was suffering from. I mean, uh, it went back to around uh, 2016, when she, she, she would be in pain, she was not going to school, and for me, I thought it's just that she didn't like the school she had gone, that she was going to, and she was maybe thinking, maybe I thought it was, she was finding it uh, a bit difficult to cope with the school. Um, as, as, as a parent, you, you start asking yourself questions, I mean, what more can I do? I have provided for, the, for, for my daughter, I've been able to, to take her to good school, what, what I can afford, and uh, I'm trying to give her the best that I can uh, as a family, as a, as, a, as a head of the house, as a father. And um, I mean, you know the normal things that you think that uh, a child will appreciate. Uh, but then as you later on discover that there are some other underlying issues that maybe you didn't understand, and um, uh, there's maybe some things she's going on. And these are things that it took me from around 2016 to about actually li literally up to 2017 and the whole of 2017 to be able to see them coming out through. I still didn't understand. And she was, she didn't do very, she, she did, she did well uh, at her A levels. But I mean, I realized that that was not her greatest potential. And it was a very tough time for her during her A levels, in the final year of her A levels. So right. That we only came to discover much later what it was, which was in 2018. Yeah. Okay, so a, a good two years really had passed before you could actually address it. Bazaria, let me come to you really quickly because you mentioned you were afraid to vocalize what it is that you were going through and almost felt guilty because you said, you know, why am I going through this? I have a great life. But when did you actually yeah. come to terms with this and said, hey, I'm, I'm not okay? And who did you talk to initially? Uh, I came to terms with it one day. I just woke up. Uh, I took a shower, but then 
when I was in the shower, I was just having suicidal thoughts and I started thinking of all the ways I could try and take my own life. And so I knew this was not normal, it was not okay. And thankfully my mom was in the house. So I I walked up the courage to go and, to go to her and tell her about it. So I went to her and told her what was happening. Uh, it was a bit awkward at first. Like, I never thought those words will, would leave my mouth. And I'm sure she didn't expect her daughter to come in and tell her such a thing. Uh, but she took it in and uh, she took me to a psychiatrist the following day. And we just started our journey from there. And I, I, was, I was scared, I was in denial, but now I'm grateful that I took that step. Absolutely, you know, and Gikonyo, for you as a father, hearing that your daughter is bearing this burden um, of, of this magnitude, what were, was going through your mind at that time? I mean, there should have been some sense of helplessness in thinking, how long did she hold this inside of her? Yeah, I, um, yes, it did. Um, it was a sense of hopelessness because as a parent, um, we were never, we've never been prepared for this. I mean, growing, us as growing up in um, high school, um, primary school in the, in the 70s, in the, in, in the late 70s and high school in the 80s and the university. I mean, we've ne we never, mental illness, uh, we were never aware of mental illness. I mean, uh, I, I never ever th knew about what people went through. Despite now when I look back, I could, uh, even in school, there could have been, I think, maybe two or three of my actual schoolmates who committed suicide, and it's most likely they were he was suffering from bipolar. Uh, but these are things that, um, as a parent, I just couldn't be able to, to come to terms with it. I'd never even heard of such diseases or such mental health illness. It was not, it was not a prominent, prom, uh, it, it was not prominent. Uh, we, we just not heard of them before. No, absolutely. The fact that you acted quickly, uh, your wife taking Zaria now to a psychiatrist, and oftentimes you'll find parents feel, what do we do next? So you've done your part in taking her to get professional help, but there's also more work to be done once she comes back home from a session, for instance. And, you know, how did you kind of navigate that time with her? Well, I think the, the the thing is to be able to listen to her and embrace it and appreciate it. Because um, in the beginning, I, I I just sort of had a, I didn't take it seriously. I didn't take it. Uh, it was almost like I was um, removed from it. Sort of, I was in denial. Uh, and um, honestly, the first time I really took it seriously was when she me she wanted to go on a TV show <laughs> and, um, and she went on this TV show and I watched us on, on, on Victoria's Lounge <laughs> coincidentally uh, and she spoke about this incident of a teenager who had committed suicide and she was talking about teenage suicide and uh, that is when I realized that she had been close to that well she had it had been there before but then is when I, it came, it hit me really completely. I became aware that this happened to her, that she could actually, that she could go through suicide. And when I realized that she was going out through a lot, and it, it was, I was so grateful that she was bold enough yeah. to actually uh, come out and speak. That is in 2018. So she's been speaking about it, and her speaking out has really helped her. And 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 I and my and I've learned that by supporting her, I'm helping her to cope with it. You know, Zaria, your dad has said it, you were very bold, still are very bold to share your experience. Um, but how did that help? What difference has it made that, yes, you have the professional help, but most importantly, you have mom and dad in your corner. What difference has that made? Uh, first of all, having a mental illness can be very, 
not can be, is very lonely. Uh, for instance, when I was first diagnosed with an eating disorder, and when I'm going through a relapse or an episode, I feel so alone because, you know, you're, I'm on the bathroom floor uh, trying to talk myself out of throwing up, but to other people, they won't understand that. But I'm always open with them. I tell them what's happening. I just, I tell them if I'm having a bad day, if I'm depressed, I, I tell them, um, I tell them if I'm relaxed. Um, I just, I'm basically open with them. Um, it's, I think what's important is parents should create that environment for their children to feel comfortable enough to go to them. Uh, because your child might want to come to you, but you've not created that environment that they feel safe and they feel comfortable enough to talk to you about it. And most of the time, that's what, uh, that's what leads to so many suicides because uh, children have felt like they, they have no one. And before you even start seeking help, because at the end of the day, if you want to seek help, somehow your parents will have to find out. And so many people don't seek help because they're scared of what their parents will say or what their parents will do. But if that environment and that space was to be created, then I think that would would help a lot. I know it's not easy. Uh, I know many people don't understand. And I usually say, um, unless you've actually gone through something, you might not understand. But as a parent, I feel like you should try and understand your child, listen to your child, and please do not dismiss them because you don't want uh, to regret it later, because most of the time, that's what's going to happen. So please, like, just create that space and yeah. that environment for your children to feel um, like they can come and talk to you about it, because at the end of the day, you are their first source. Absolutely, absolutely. You're and who, Konyo, let me bring you in Your there. parents are who you go to. Absolutely. And, you know, um, Zari has just mentioned something really important. It's parents creating this safe space. Um, and I know by now you're past that point of worrying about what other people think. You're standing publicly with your daughter. And let's be honest, in an African context, parents don't do this. Dads don't do this. You know, what advice would you give to a parent watching who probably is in the same position that you were in back in 2016, trying to figure out what this all means? What advice do you give them? Uh, you know, um, coping with, my, with with this situation is that you've got to be able to listen to your to your children and and also speak out to other people. To also then you realize that when you speak out, uh, you realize that they're not alone. Uh, a lot of men we we like we like uh, we we keep things to ourselves. Uh, it's like um, men in silence. Um, you don't want to you don't want to speak out to other people uh, and tell them what you're going through or what you're going uh, what your your daughter is going through or your son or your any of your children because maybe you might, maybe somebody might judge you and say oh you don't know how to bring up children you're spoiling your children and things like that and I think that there are a lot of parents who are suffering um, parents uh, of who are boys parents who have girls, or both, both. I am fortunate I have a boy who's, my son is much older, uh, six years older than Zaria. Um, we have an open conversation with him, uh, but uh, Zaria, uh, uh, she's, a, she's a bold one. She's the one who is ready to speak out, and she'll tell me, she'll, she'll come to me and tell me as it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, she, she doesn't like So. That has taught, that has because of our boldness, it has made me come out and be ready to speak out. 
Uh, and I would just urge other parents to be more understanding. You know, sometimes parents think, oh, I've given my daughter this, I've given my children this, I have taken them to this school, I've taken them to holiday. When they want something, I've given it to them. So there's no problem. My children don't have a problem. What problem would they have? When you get a child who starts um, taking alcohol, substance abuse or something, as a parent, you start saying, what, are they, what don't they have? Uh, why should they be behaving like this? You then start thinking that they're just rebelling against life or rebelling against you and not realizing that they actually could be going through some, some issues. Uh, so there's a need for more understanding. Unfortunately for, for a lot of people, they might not be able to get that professional help either from a psychiatrist or a counselor. So for us as a family, we are a bit more uh, uh, blessed that we could be able to afford that. But just imagine how many other families cannot afford them. Uh, this country does not have enough uh, uh, doctors who are trained or practicing in mental health. And there's also this need to address issues about mental health and the legislation. I know there was a, a mental health bill that was that uh, was uh, being uh, sponsored in, in, in the parliament. Uh, Senator Kasanga was very much involved in that, but unfortunately it didn't see the light of day and it's going to be reintroduced. But um, we need to start speaking about mental health in everywhere. And you might be, so, you'll be very surprised that nearly in every family yeah. there is a state of mental health, that, an issue of mental health. Absolutely, and hence why we're having this conversation tonight on this platform is to start the conversation. Thank you so much, Zaria and Gikonyo, for your time, for your bravery and your candor. A bit more critically when it comes to mental health and support within the family structure. Let's take a short break here on Citizen Weekend. Much more ahead, including...